Okay, let me know if everybody can see me. I have it back up. Hello. Okay, we'll start in a minute. Very good. Hello everyone and welcome. That was the voice of Melissa Armo and you can actually see her there in the uh, in the window. That's Melissa live. It is time to begin. Let's get the percussion section ready. Okay, and now cue the trumpets please. Cue the trumpets. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the sound of the trumpet, you know it's time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter today from thestockswoosh.com. Please welcome our Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. You're getting to see me live today. For the very first time, I'm doing a live presentation with Online Trader Central. Welcome. Welcome to New York City. Welcome to my world. It's very, very light behind me with the window, but this is the time of the day. Hopefully, you can see me. I thought this would be a great interactive experience and I'm going to be doing more interactive experiences with you, the client, and I can see all your questions right in here. So still type your questions in the box. I will look to the right when I see your questions during the lecture today and you can focus on me and what I'm saying and also the PowerPoint slides. So as Kevin said, my name is Melissa Armo and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh and I day trade and I day trade one method that I do that I've been doing well for about eight years, but I didn't figure out how to trade and make money to, right away. So it took me about three years to figure out my system. And so I've been doing my system consistently now for a little over five years. And what the lecture is about today is how you can work for yourself. And I work from home. I mean, this is, this is actually my home. This is my home in, in Manhattan and this is where I live. And this is where I trade every day. It's just people don't see me trade, they hear me in the live trading room. And now I'm talking to you tonight. And as I said, going forward, I'm going to have more live interactive experiences where I'm going to be possibly even trading live. Well, you'll be able to see me do that in the live trading room, which is going to be a good experience. But tonight, I think this is good. So we can relate to one another and you can see if anything that I'm saying to you today makes sense, if it clicks or resonates with you, or if it doesn't. There's a lot of trading methods and systems out there. I know it because I talk to people that are brand new to trading. I talk to people that have taken prior classes and some things I got stuff out of, some things I didn't learn anything. I think one of the main things that people get out of coming with me is the focus. And so we're gonna talk about that today because in order to make $1,000 a day, you really do have to be focused in the market. Now, if you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com and you can go follow me at any one of these social media sites. I'd say the best one to follow me on Actually, this is my old phone number. Sorry about that, everyone. My, my, my updated phone number is 929-3200-427, by the way. But YouTube is the best place to go and follow me. I'm taping this right now, and this webinar will be on YouTube tonight. So if you miss a webinar of mine, or if you want to see a play of the day or a market review, you can go to YouTube. But you have to go there and subscribe to get the video emailed to your inbox. Okay, great. So we'll start out here with a quote. This is actually a quote for me. And my theme for March is about balance. And I will say that if you want to live the life you dream of, you can. The choice is yours. It's up to you to make it happen. I know this sounds cliche, but at the end of the day, there's something to be said for hard work. Now, a lot of people may be like, well, I, I work really hard with my trading. I've been studying, studying. I've been reading every book out there about, about charts and candlesticks, and I'm losing money, Melissa. Well, you know what? A lot of people want to trade the market. What is the difference between me someone that's successful and someone that's losing. Is it just the idea of the hard work? No, no, there's a lot more to it than that. And we're gonna talk about that too. The main thing is you really need a plan of action. The plan of action is you're gonna have a focus on one specific thing you're doing, one specific strategy, one specific trade, one specific stock, and even in one specific direction of how you're gonna look at it. And there's a reason for that, which we're gonna talk about. Oh, Jean asked for the phone number here. It's 929-3200, actually it's GAP. That's the number. And Kathy can put it in the room again for everybody. So what is the number one thing that I focus on every day? I'm focusing on who is in control of the stock. Now, what does that mean? It means are the bulls or the bears? You've heard this term before. It means is someone buying a stock and lifting the price higher or someone shorting the stock or selling the stock and pushing it lower? 
Now this is HZNP. I just clipped this chart because this was a gap that happened today and it fell. It fell on the live day. So who was in control in this stock on the day? The shorts. So what happened here? The stock closed up here. This is on Friday night around 19 something and opened this morning around $18 and some change. Okay. Then it fell, fell hard, fell all the way down to 16 bucks. So the stock fell on the day, $2 plus. So who was in control of this stock on the day? The shorts or the bears. Selling action was in control. No one was buying this stock today. It's HDNP, okay? So you've got to get the control right in order to know how to take the trade so you know whether you go long or short. And you got to get the control right before the trade sets up. And preferably, I like to know before the market even opens who is in control of HCNP or whatever stock I happen to trade, okay? I do my prep work ahead of time before the market even opens. So I know who is in control. And I have a rating system that tells me how to do that. But if you're going long a stock, for example, in the day, then, you're, then you would be losing money. You would be down in the day because the control is with the bears, okay? Thank you, Kathy. There's my information. So what is the number one thing I'm teaching people to do? I'm teaching them to make money with determining that directional control in gaps, okay? And we'll go back, HZNP, for example, was a gap. So I'm looking for the control in a gap, and that's how you make money. And this is what I'm teaching people, and this is what I do. I'm looking for who's in control in a gap, because it's stock gap. And for those of you that don't know what a gap is, it's only the differentiation between where stock closes the night before at four o'clock Eastern time and opens the next day at 9.30 when the market opens. Okay, that's all that a gap is. Stocks gap down and up all the time. And the market does too, okay? But I'm looking to determine who's in control. Okay, so today's lecture is gonna be about people that maybe have thought about day trading, or maybe you trade now, but you just don't have a reliable strategy. I talk to people as well that say, well, Melissa, I trade, but I'm not consistent. I make money some days, I lose money other days, and at the end of the month, I'm down. Well, it's probably because you don't have a strategy or your strategy isn't reliable. And maybe you're thinking, gosh, you know, I'd really like to quit my job and do something different. I want to make $1,000 a day and I want a new career. One of the reasons I decided to train was because I wanted a new career. I was doing mortgages and I was doing mortgages from home just like I, I'm doing here. And I just didn't like the business anymore. And I wanted to get out and I wanted to have something that had a good potential of income, which obviously trading the market does. Because the difference between making a little bit of money in a trade or a lot is really just the size. So we're gonna to talk today about trades of how you can make $1,000 a day and how much you need to risk for that too. But it's never too late to learn something. Even if you are at the point where you say, gosh, you know, I've been trying this thing for 10 years or 15 years and I still can't get it right and I'm, and I'm giving up. I'm starting to think that I can't even do this thing, which is trade. But the fact is you can, you can, but it takes more than hard work although you do need to work hard. That hard work might be the mental work of overcoming some of the negative thoughts that you have that you've boxed yourself into about the market. One which would be that you can't do it because people can do it. I know people can do it because I'm doing it. Not only that, I'm teaching people how to do it, okay? And it's a good time of the year to do it because it's still the beginning part of the year. I know it's March tomorrow, but it's still very early on in the year for you to do something different with yourself this year. I mean, if you started trading March 1st and all year worked full time and part time traded by the end of the year, you could be at your goal. You might be there in six months. You might be there in three months. I don't know how long it's going to take you to pick it up and learn it. People do well when they're in the trading room with me. That is their easiest way for them to do it. But there's billions of dollars that run through the market every day. So this conceptually, the idea of making a thousand dollars a day in the market is like a it's like a teeny weeny little bit of money that the market even offers people but the problem is like i said that people have no idea what to do don't have a strategy and can't determine ahead of time who's in control to know how to take the trade okay so you've got to have one strategy which i do and like i said it's gaps now it's not just gaps per se i'm looking for something called a golden gap and that's a name that i made up i made up when i determine my strategy. I made up a 26 point rating system to determine which stock would work on the day, meaning that it would work as a long or short, okay? So it is about the consistency and where do I get that by having the niche. If you wanna be like everyone else, then you just buy indicators and you, and you read certain books out there that are gonna tell you about different things like different setups 
you know, bull flags and bear flags and stuff like that, or, or you buy a, a system that gives you like a, a ding bell and tells you buy it here and sell it here. If it was that easy, we just all, we don't have that same system. It's not. There's, there's, a, there's an evaluation that goes into my system of the 26 points. There's, a, there's an evaluation process. It's, it's not something that actually you could program into a black box. Somebody emailed me the other day and said, well, do you have, a, do you have something I can buy just to plug it in for the system? The answer is no, and there probably never will be, okay? You are the best person to use the information that I teach you to look at the chart and determine it. And you're looking and reading the institutional money in a chart of who's in control, okay? That's where you get the edge. You get the edge by seeing who's in control of the stock on that day. And when I say who determines the control, it's institutional money. Institutional money is money that moves stocks to the tune of millions of billions of dollars. They can come in on the live day and sell a stock, or they can buy a stock on the live day, or they can, they can short stocks. So that's where I get my edge, okay? It's a 26-point daily checklist that determines pre-market okay or at night you can do a post market at night who's in control of that stock or who's going to be in control of that stock on the live trading day before you take your trade i'm not trading the pre and post market but i have determined with the checklist who's going to be in control okay and this is where i get my edge now why is an edge important as we talked about because sometimes it can be tricky Sometimes it can be tricky. The market's been very tricky lately. I'm just talking about the S&P, for example. It's really higher, but many people think it's lower. It's been tricky. It's faking people in and out, and sometimes stocks do that too. And this, again, where it goes in where you have to have the focus. Now, let's look at JCP. And go ahead. You can write your questions in here. I'm, I'm seeing everybody's questions. Um, JCP gapped Friday. This was an earnings gap. It gapped up. This was Thursday night. Thursday night, the stock closed here around $8.37 or something. Then it gapped up on Friday morning to $9.60 some cents or wherever it opened here. Okay, so this was a gap. So you could have gotten up in the morning on a Friday morning and you could have rated this gap. All right. Now you would have rated this as a, as a bullish gap because it gapped up. Okay, now I prefer to short, but I do sometimes go long. Anyways, it's gapped up. You would have rated the gap. You would have rated the gap to determine if it was a good long. Okay, now the rating system would have told you, yes, it's a stock that institutions are buying. Or maybe it would have said, no, it's not a stock that institutions are buying. But either way, you wouldn't have shorted it. You wouldn't have shorted it because it's a gap up. And it was a valid stock to rate as a long. Okay, now what happened? It dropped, fell, rallied on the live day. And then push through today. And I don't know where this closed today, but this was a trading action in the afternoon on this. Do you see how this is getting bought? So today it opened and just rallied all day. So you would have the information, if you learn from me, to know what to do with JCPenney. When a lot of people out there that play gaps might look at this and say, oh, this is going to do a gap fill. It's going to fill the gap. It's going to fall and fill the gap. And I guarantee you that some people actually were short this overnight which helped this go the way it did on today here to the upside too. Some people probably shorted this overnight thinking it would fall underneath the low from Friday, okay, into itself, into support, and fill the gap. There's no method out there about gap fills that makes any sense because conceptually there's nothing intellectually that makes sense about it. Gap fills do not work. Even when you see something that says, Melissa, will it fill the gap? I can look at it and tell you actually what happened intellectually, okay, of telling you. The only thing that you can do in the market to make money is by going with the power of money, who's buying and who's selling. If you went and talked to a, if you went and talked to a fund manager, okay, as a, as a person, you got all dressed up, they had a suit and tie on, you go, you had this big meeting, all right? You, what would you say? You would say, well, I'm, I'm going to invest my money. I'm going to put a million dollars in this stock because it's going to do a gap fill. That person would look like you like you were an idiot, okay? If you, if, I mean, this is not how people think that our intellectuals are smart about the market. They don't think like that, and it makes no sense. You have to act like you are running your own little mini hedge fund. You're your own little stockbroker. You're going to be thoughtful about it, and you're going to say, okay, now, is a fund buying a stock today or selling it? If I had a million dollars that I wanted to invest in JCPenney, what would I do? Well, you're not going to take it to fill the gap. That there's nothing that even in that makes any sense at all. 
You're going to look at it and you're going to determine if institutions are going to buy it or if institutions are going to sell it. And therefore, then after that, you're going to determine if it sets up in the live day. And if it does, you'll trade it in the right direction, which you will know from the rating system. But you have to think common sense wise about what to do about these trades. I think a lot of day traders get in the habit of kind of fat fingering things where they see setups that are do not have a strategy intact that have any intellectual thought process or common sense for doing something that you couldn't explain if you went and talked to someone that never even heard of the word gap fill. You have to be able to say to a normal person, I'm buying JCPenney because JCPenney is being bought by institutional money because it closed the night before at $8.37 and gapped up $1.30 overnight and I rated the gap on the daily chart based on my rating system strategy and it's going to get bought today by institutional money. Therefore, I'm going to go along the stock today and the target is this and that. And that makes sense. I think the world that traders live in is, is so like, is so small that they don't understand what's really happening in, in the market or in stocks. I really live in my own world when I trade, and it is definitely not a world that many people share that are traders out there, which is one of the reasons that that what I do is so different, but it works because I'm thinking like I could go have a conversation or a meeting with the guy that runs the hedge fund and talk to him about JCP or any other stock I would trade and say what I'm doing and be able to say it and, and, and say it in an intellectually concise matter that makes sense. It has common sense and explain the reason for the trade, which is not this gap fill idea. Okay. Now getting back to what I was saying, talking about working, talking about this idea of working and being smart about what you're doing. I only usually do one trade a day. Okay. Now, why are people so inconsistent with the trading results? Lack of focus and strategy. Okay. In other words, if you get up in the morning and you wanted to do JCP today, you wouldn't have needed to do anything else, okay? People also don't know how to read who's in control, like I was saying, and a lot of people are just looking for setups. Now, if you never, if you never traded before, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about, but if you're already trading right now, you know what I'm talking about. You're, you're just looking for setups on the live day, but they don't have a strategy that's backing up the setup. So lots of times these setups fail. Now, what do I mean by a setup? Buying support, shorting resistance, these kinds of things, they don't work in every stock because the strategy has to be intact. I'm just not shorting every rally into resistance out there and I'm not buying every support, okay? Now getting back to this here, who's in control, okay? Who's in control in JCPenney? This is a chart back from, I'm going back, here's today, and here's back from the Friday. Now this is a five minute. So this is a five minute chart in JCPenney before I was showing you the daily chart. You can see here that the first beginning part of the day, you see JCPenney? The first beginning part of the day, the stock sold off. So every bar here is a five minute bar. So I know how traders think. Again, we're talking about the gap fill idea. A lot of traders think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna short this for a gap fill. Here's where the stock closed the night before, down in here, you can see it around 8.30 opened up here around 960 or whatever it is, okay? If you shorted this, could you have made money? Theoretically, yes. I'm sure some traders did short this. Did it have a target? No. If it even had a target, did it go to the target? No, because a lot of traders would have thought, oh, gap fell, gap fell down to the, to the previous day's close, which it never got anywhere near, okay? Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, if you go into this in the live day thinking that you're gonna short it, you're wrong in the control of the stock. The control of this stock is to the upside, to the bulls. Stock got bought in here, rally continued and followed through today. And I showed you that big green bar that it had today. Actually made, went over and made another high on the live day on Friday. Even though the market fell on Friday, JCPenney had so much control to the upside on Friday and the live trading day, the S&P and the QQQs were down on Friday, down in the day. And JCPenney fell for the first few minutes and then rallied all day, despite the fact the overall market was down. Very unusual. Why? Because the control in JCPenney was in the bulls, not the bears. So it didn't even go with the overall market on Friday. Again, very unusual. But many stocks that I trade have nothing to do with the market. But that's another story. Anyways, getting back to this, it's followed through on Monday. And so you had to get the control right. Now let's just say you said, Melissa, Melissa, I could have shorted this and then I could have gone long and I could have done both and made money. Yes, theoretically you could have. 
But let's go back to the top. You have a big meeting. You're meeting that fund manager. Chance of a lifetime, okay? Might offer you a job to trade with him, pay you millions of dollars, okay? How are you going to explain this trade if you short it and go long it to that fund manager? You couldn't. You wouldn't. You would look like an idiot, okay? There's only one way to do J.C. Penny in the level of control of who's in control of the stock that makes sense, that is an intellectual thought process. You have a system to determine that and you go with it or you don't. Maybe, maybe you don't do anything with J.C. Penny. Maybe you don't trade it. But the point is you can't have conviction to short a stock and buy a stock at the same time in the same day. If you went and talked to any smart wealthy intellectual person who ran a company or big money and said you did that in the same stock in the same day they 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 would they would never hire you they would never hire you at all okay so the point i'm trying to make is that you have to think like you are that kind of person so you can go in and make money all the time looking at something the right way it is impossible to have conviction to short something and then turn right around and buy it it's like wait a minute you don't have any conviction then one minute you think it's a it's a short, next minute you think it's a long. One minute you think institutional money is selling it, the next minute you think institutional money is buying it. No, that doesn't even make any sense. It makes no sense. But this is what traders do, and it's so, so wrong. This is not what I do. What I do is look at it, and then I rate the gap. I only do gaps, okay, whether they're bullish or bearish. Then I determine who's in control with my rating system. Then I watch the stock on the live day to get the setup. Okay, because if it doesn't set up, then I'm still not doing it. Something could actually look good and then not even set up. That happens. We're going to talk about one at the end here about that. So again, who is in control? You cannot just look for setups. Biggest mistake the traders make, the biggest mistake the traders make out there in general, day traders I'm talking about. The strategy has to be intact for consistency. The golden gap strategy, which is what I do, my own system, I made it up, tells you where the money is going to know how to trade it correctly for consistent profits. Just like if you would go get a job with a big company and they would hire you and give you their money to trade, okay? No one is going to give you a million dollars of their own money to trade if you're, if you're shorting JCPenney and then turning around and buying it, okay? This is a main reason why traders are so all over the place with their results. You cannot go long and short the same stock in one day with conviction and you've got to get the direction right. There's only ever one person in control of a stock on any one given day, period. That's it. There's only one control. There only can be one control. It's like, it's like if you were, um, it's like you're, you're driving down the road. You can, you're, 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 you're driving in one direction. You can only be driving in one direction. You can't be driving in five directions at once if you're in the car. You're driving down the road in one direction. You're either going up Fifth Avenue or you're going down Fifth Avenue. You're either going north or south, east or west, okay? You have to know who's in control. There's only one person in control, period. There's only one person in the driver's seat of the stock. There's only one person in the driver's seat of a car. This is, you know, very basic common sense, but this is how I trade. And one of the reasons that I am successful, okay? And one of the reasons you'd come and trade with me, by the way. Anyways, going back to this here, talking about setups, J.C. Penny in a one-minute chart on Friday, here's what many traders will look for. They say, oh, this is a rally. It's a rallying to resistance. I'm going to short it. Now, again, if you did short this rallying to resistance on Friday, you were profitable. But it never went to the target. Who knows if it even got out before it flipped. You are against the control of the stock on the day. So it's a no-no. But the problem is that sometimes people make money doing something like this. And then they'll do it over and over and over again. So the one time they make money, they lose the other 10. So then they think that nothing works. And then they get upset. And then they think the market doesn't work and blah, blah, blah. But it's just they should have never been doing this in the first place. And the danger is... You take one trade like this and you make a lot of money and then you then you want to try to replicate it 50 times after that and it doesn't work because a lot of times what happens and if i drew this out here i can't draw on this but if i drew this out a lot of times what happens is something will come in it'll go shoo, and they'll make a tail and it'll go poof, and it'll go like that and it'll happen where it just happens like automatically and you get totally stopped out and you probably get blown through your stop even um because a lot of times longs work like that with machines and then you lose more than you made on the one good trade that you had and you keep trying to go after it and it just doesn't work and you don't know why, but I'm telling you why, okay? I'm telling you why, because you've got the control wrong. And you can't have conviction in a short and a long and a same stock of the same day. Does anyone have any questions about this while I'm talking? Now, I'm gonna go over here what happened today. Today, JCPenney was a more 
uh, pretty long because it was easy peasy. You could have gone long the stock over the high of the day here in JCPenney this morning early. And, or you could have waited till it even got over 10. You could have taken an aggressive setup here. There was a lot of long entries in this today, the last day in the month, to go long it. It followed through very nicely over the high of Friday. And it just rallied all day. I mean, it literally got bought and rallied all day. So, again, the follow through of the control came from Friday into Monday for JCPenney. It's to the upside. I highly doubt anyone shorted the stock today, but I'm sure people might have shorted JCPenney overnight thinking it was going to fall into support from Friday into Monday, and those people were down today and then had to cover. And so this is some short covering, but it really got bought. Okay? Again, who's in control? So what I was saying was my rating system tells me who is in control to know the direction to do this, and that's very important to make money. So how can you make $1,000 a day day trading? Focus on one strategy, which is Golden Gas, which tells you who's in control. That's what I do. I use my rating system to determine that. And then if you want to make $1,000 a day, you can risk as much as you want in your trades, depending on your account size and how much risk that you can take. But if you want to make $1,000 a day, four to $500 is a good amount that you should be risking per trade. And how many trades would you take a day? Well, you can take as many as you want, but I think, again, it's good to focus on one, two at the most, okay? This keeps your losses very small if something doesn't work. You can lose on a Monday and make money Tuesday, Wednesday, and be up a lot for the week and have your going for the week. Many traders, again, miss the boat, trade all day. I only trade in the morning. I try to be out quick. Only one trade, maybe two. This keeps your losses down. And then you hold your gains from the morning and the gains of the days that you make good money. And then I take an entry once the stock sets up in the best qualified golden gap in the one minute chart. If I have a couple things to look at on the day, I try to go with the one that rates the highest, but really you could do all of them that rate well. And then I don't trade when there are no good gaps. Actually, I didn't trade today. I didn't take any trades at all today, okay? So there will be days when you don't trade. Again, this comes in the idea of the focus because your goal is not to just trade, your goal is to make money. So again, I'm teaching people how to make money. You must do this for a purpose to make money. It is not just a fun activity to trade. It is something that you must take seriously, all right? You must take it seriously when you go into the market. And I'm not saying that people don't, but I'm saying that, I'm saying that people don't take it seriously enough, yeah. I, I'm saying that people don't take it seriously enough because they just don't. I don't, I don't know why, but they just don't. They'll, they'll, they'll take a tip from something on TV or on the internet or something, and they'll take a trade. And they'll have absolutely no idea why that trade is even something that they should even take. And that's not taking it seriously enough. That's not taking it seriously at all. In fact, my live trading room, no one can join my live trading room unless you've taken my class. That's how much I believe that people must be serious about trading. Because I could charge for the live trading room and I could get more clients coming in. But then I say uh, the people aren't going to be serious. And the people aren't going to make money because they don't know what they're doing. You have to learn what you're doing first. And that's where the serious part of it comes. Okay, and four to five hundred dollars a day isn't isn't anything to sneeze at. I mean, that's a good amount of money to risk when you think about it. Now let's go over here. This is car. This was a gap from last week. It was Wednesday. Now, as we were talking about about the control, the stock closed here around twenty nine something or whatever. This was the night before on Tuesday, and the gap down on Wednesday morning here around twenty five dollars. So again, you can look for bearish gaps or bullish gaps, but a gap down. Look at the nice selling action that it had. This red bar to pick selling action. Low in here, the price in here has run 22 something. Actually, it broke 22. It went to like 21.95 or something crazy. This, this went past the target and went to the dream target. So you would have looked to rate this gap in the morning as a bearish gap down to see if it was a good short, to see if institutions were going to come in and sell the stock on the day, which by the way, they did. They did and it was a good rated gap. You wouldn't have gone long this for a gap fill. If you did, you lost money. The control was not to the upside. Gene is saying here, here. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, what is a golden gap? I keep saying this term. I know I made, made up the name. I coined it. But it's a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. And it's a gap that moves in the direction of the gap with institutional money. Because traders and investors are moving it. They're selling it. They're shortening it. They're buying it. And they're doing it into the gap. And then you are rating it to determine if it's going to fall through on the live day for you to trade it into the gap. Because not every gap down is a short and not every gap up is a long. So you still can see the gap, and you're not going to just go long every bullish gap. You have to rate it, because one, if it sells off, 
if it rates poorly, it's probably going to sell off. Now, I'm not shorting those, but I'm saying to you that you still have to rate it because you can't buy every up gap and you can't short every down gap. This is confusing for people to the do gaps because they're saying, well, wait a minute, Melissa, you're saying to me that everything that gaps up, I'm supposed to rate as a bullish gap, but what if it doesn't rate well? Could I short it? Theoretically, you could. I'm not doing that because it kind of screws up your head then what you're supposed to be doing when you look at longs or shorts in the, in the opposite direction. So I just don't do that because I'm so focused where I'm only going in the direction of the gap. And that's not a golden gap. It would just be a stinky long. A, it would just be a poor golden gap. If it was a bullish gap that gapped up and didn't rate well. Say it rated 10 of the 26 points. I wouldn't short it. It's just a bad bullish gap that I just wouldn't do. And it probably would fall on the day. Okay. But I don't do this. Now, in the case of a bullish golden gap, institutions are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the trading day. It's getting bought. Like JCPenney today is getting bought by institutional money. In the case of a bearish golden gap, institutions are selling and are shorting the stock. Could be either or. Therefore, the stock moves lower in the trading day. Although I will tell you, it's better if it's selling action. Selling action is better and stronger than short action. Okay? And you got to know how to read this too, which I teach in the class. This is why I prefer bearish gaps, though, because gaps that gap down have two things happening, selling and shorting. And therefore, they have a double potential for the move. And also, selling action comes in fast in stocks. And I like to trade and be out of my trades fast. So as I've been talking about the whole lecture, even though the point of the lecture is to make $1,000 a day, what I'm telling you is, in order to make money of $1,000 a day, you have to have a reason for doing the trade. And the reason for doing the trade is you are getting the direction of the control right to buy it or short it so that you make $1,000 a day. Because you won't even make a dollar a day every day of the 200 trading days if you don't get the direction right. So the idea is the consistency. This is how you're doing it for a career. You cannot quit your day job if you cannot consistently make money in the market. Your results cannot be all over the place. In order to achieve consistent trading results, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap. And then you confirm that the large money will flow with it. And you pick the direction by the rating system. The confirmation is when the stock opens and sets up on the day. And I teach the entries in the class. So even if you rate a gap and it rates well, you got to get the confirmation. The confirmation is the setup that happens in the live day. Okay? By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it. Gaps create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock, whoever's in it. Okay, what, whoever's in it, longs or shorts, bulls or bears. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful, though unprofitable, because of the sense of urgency, the movement and momentum and volume that comes into the stocks, like you saw with the JCPenney and even the car. And I've been talking about this. Institutional money could mean anything by banks. It, it could mean hedge funds. It could mean small hedge funds, big hedge funds, anything like that. And here you have the car again. Okay. Now, does anyone have any questions while I'm looking here? Just let me look aside and see if I missed anyone. No one has any questions so far? Okay, I'm just going to keep talking. So as I was saying, this checklist, okay, goes through and tells me where the institutional money will be on the live day. It measures gaps by rating them on the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have a high probability of directional bias for the day. Because this is what you're looking for, high probabilities. There's no 100% anything in the market. You're looking for high probability. That's where you get the conviction. Many trades will work, some will not work, and you have to account for that in your risk amount. You are also looking for something to have a big move in the day, and I want early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. For example, J.C. Penney, if that had kept dropping, 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 would have never set up right as a long of the day, the control would have been flipped, okay? But it did. It set the low of the day early enough, the buying came in, followed through. And I'm also looking for precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward potential. I'm looking for a good risk reward potential when I trade. I'm not a scalper person. I'm looking for momentum moves. I think this is how you can really make a lot of money trading. Now here is a gap. I want to show you this was back from last week too. This was Restoration Hardware, RH. I just want to show you here this gap. This stock closed the night before up here at 52 and opened down here around 40 something. It dropped and had a big drop on the live debt. Now, who is in control? If you rated the gap, you rated good enough to short. If you shorted it on the live day, you made money. If you looked to go long and you lost. Now, what if the next day, this was on the following day, Friday, what if you looked to go long the stock? Maybe you thought, well, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this as a swing trader. I'm going to go long it or it can't drop anymore. What if you want to go long in here? Theoretically, could you have made money on this day? Theoretically, yes. 
it had a green body bar, didn't have any right long setups in it. It had a green body bar, though it had a gain on the day, technically, but the reality is it didn't go anywhere. It didn't follow through. Here's what it did today. Here's what it did today. The follow through came in today lower. So if you bought this as a swing trade, you're down. It's going to break. If you went long in the day, theoretically on Friday, you could have actually bought it and made money, but the institutional power was not in this at all, in the stock at all, not in the long-term downtrend, not in the debt. Theoretically, it had a small move up, but it didn't have a right entry. And, and like I said, you want to get something that, that can move, like a dollar or more, like a move. And you had that here on the Thursday and then the Monday. How do I find candidate, candidates? Well, you just scan it. You scan it you, with the scanner gene. Gene is saying, well, how do you find these, like the RH? With a scanner. You can buy a scanner or your platform has a list of top 20 down stocks and up stocks that are gapping. Every platform should have one for free in both the indexes. Both your indexes should have them in any, any platform you have. And if you don't know how to find that in your platform, call your platform place. Or you can go on to yahoofinance.com. I mean, there's a lot of free sites out there, or you can pay for a scanner. I use my platform. Now let's go here in the golden gap for the car. Okay, this had a really nice move last week. Now, what did you do? You rated the gap in the morning. You liked it. It closed the night before you around here at 30 bucks, and it opened down here around 24 something looks amazing you rank the gap you're still not in the stock yet you're not in the stock yet you're not doing anything at all it opens and you're just watching it but your anticipation okay talking about this before your conviction your conviction is not to go along the stock even though you see some green bars and it's rallying in the first five minutes and you see the big space up here and you're like oh, and then it rallies no, the conviction is to the downside because of the rating system, which I would teach you, of how to go with this move. Who's going to come into this thing? This is something that I do extremely well, by the way. The stock, a stock will open and do something like this and fake people out and people will buy it over the high and they will think that this is a good long, that are traders or whatever, and, and I will be pouncing on my computer to short this stock. It was a short. Anyways, here's the short. And it fell off a planet. In no time at all, it fell off a planet. And actually, the real target on the day with this was 24. It went and broke 22. It went to some crazy number. It fell all morning long. So going back to who's in control of car, well, you look at this now. You say this very easily. You can say this, well, of course, Melissa, the control is, is to the bears. But did you know that in the morning when you saw this? And did you know that in the morning before this happened? Because in the morning before this happens, you see nothing. You see nothing at all. You see in your live level two the gap in the pre-market or your pre-market day, and you see nothing at all. This is you, There's nothing here. Nothing's printed yet. This is the live day here. You're not seeing anything. You have to rate the gap based on where the stock is gapping when you're pricing your level two. You don't even know what this is going to do. You don't see this. This is after the fact. After the fact, it's easy to see, oh, there it is. It just it sold off $3. No, you got to predict that beforehand or you won't make any money. And if you go long this or wait till it does this and opens and if you buy it over the high, then you're going to lose. And sometimes what happens is this is the not the good thing is that sometimes people will keep going after buying this. And then that pushes it down more. That didn't really happen with the series. Kind of just had straight selling after this. But this was a good short. So if you shorted this and your goal was to make $1,000 a day, your risk could be between $400 and $500. You can risk more than this. I'm risking more than this in my trades, but again, I've been trading for eight years. You don't have to start out risking this. You can risk 50 bucks. There's no rule. It's what you want to do. Price is $25.12. This is a rule. This is You take the right entries, and you got to get the pick right. Target's $24. If you did this and got out at the target, you made $1,344 on this stock shorting it on Wednesday. Boy, if you could have held it. If you held it to the dream target, you could have made $2,544, risking only $456. That's your goal for the week. That's basically your goal for the week. I mean, if you really think about it, $2,500 a week is 10 grand a month. 10 grand a month gets you up to 120 a year that you could be making trading. And if you make 120 grand the first year you trade, next year, guess what? You're gonna make 250. So, I mean, you, you, it is just, it's just amazing to me how in one or two trades, you can make your goal for the week. It's the point though, that many, many traders are not thinking like that in a bigger way. They're so into the trade that they're doing right now, the second, and if they have one loser, then they keep wanting to trade. And then they trade themselves into a hole of three losers. And then they then they got the rest of the week. Well, you have the rest of the week to make back just one loser. Big whoop. You can make back one loser so easily, okay? 
But if you if you have four losers on a day, you're having a bad day, that's harder to make back. You've got to keep the losses low. And again, it goes back to the focus. All right, big whoop, one loser. So you get up the next day. One and two good trades can make your goal for the week. And if your goal for the week is you really want to make $1,000 a day, that's still five grand for the week. And you have half your goal for the week in here. If you held this to the target, you had half your goal for the weekend in one trade, and you got four other days. Now, I when I when I train somebody and I make money for the day, though I'm done. I'm not. I don't continue to trade. Even, even, even still, I focus on one trade a day. So if, if my goal for the day is in one trade, that's it. I'm done. Okay. And if your goal is a thousand dollars a day, you hit it in this without even holding it. All right. Beautiful, nice move in this. All right. I'm seeing everyone's writing here. If you have any questions. Now, someone had asked about this the other day on an email to me. Well, what if what if one doesn't work, Melissa? Well, this WTW I really liked a lot on Friday. I did not do it. I had very strict parameters for this. This gap rated good, but it never set up right. It actually rallied over the resistance that I wanted to short it. And I said, it's off. And I never took a short in this. And it didn't work right. And it just flat out didn't work as a short on Friday. So this actually, I didn't lose any money on it. And it actually failed. And you see her now today and actually rallied. So it's a bust. In the long term picture, this might still be lower, but this had no play in it in either direction on Friday. I didn't make any money in it, but I didn't lose. And you don't do anything with this here today. So you might look at something, love it, and then it doesn't set up in the day, but then you don't do it. Then you don't lose any money. It's better than just taking trades for no reason. Okay. So your trading account really should grow over time. Now that doesn't mean that some days you won't take one of these buttons or one of these coins and put it down on the other coin. But then the next day it should go up and the next day it should go up. So it should be a gradual momentum move up of your trading account. It shouldn't be down. And, and I think when, when people start to see money when they start to make real money in the market and see consistent gains like when people take my class and then they trade with me in the room then they then they start to build in their own conviction to do it to do it for themselves and to do it for a living where they can actually quit their job and work from home and do it but the thing is that many people that are training don't have the focus and they're not seeing the consistent gains and then they're lacking the conviction to take a leap of faith and trade for a living and take the time to do it and spend the money on a class and spend the money on the trades because you still have to take the risk to make the money now, I'm going to start out using a $300 risk. Theoretically, if you're really, really good at picking the gaps and finding the good gaps, you could make it with a $300 R. And I say four to 500. But I am looking for three R's a day on my trades. So three R's is really 900 bucks, okay, on the low end. Six R's is 1,800 and 10 is 3,000. Could you get 10 R's in a trade? Yes, okay, you can. And actually, the one from the car was a huge trade. If you make $1,000 a day, you would average about 20 grand a month, okay? Which is approximately $240,000 a year. You'd have to be very good, though, to risk 300. So my advice to you is to risk four to 500. So if you risk 400 and you make two hours in a day, that's 800 bucks. But during the week, you'll have some trades that you make more than two. Some will make three and one might make six and one might make four. Maybe one day you lose. So it has to be really around the four or 500 mark. And again, in the 500 mark, you're probably even making more than an average of $1,000 a day because it doesn't have to go that much for you to make even $1,500, okay? But you have to know what you're doing in order to take this kind of risk. And when I trade, I take the entry and I put in a stop. I put in a hard stop, it's a limit order. So I use my hot keys to take the trade and then I have to manually put in the stop, but the stop is a hard stop for the limit order. And that means that I'm only risking a certain amount. That means if the trade fails and I get stopped out, boom, I'm down that amount of money. I don't take an unlimited risk in my trades. And no one should do that. So I use a hard stop. It's a limit order stop. Does anyone have any questions about anything at all so far? Anything that I said so far? I've been talking about gaps, my system. I've been talking about how you can make money doing this. You're looking for the control. And I have a high success rate in my own personal trading and with my students because I'm teaching them common sense to look for who's in control of the stock and only play it in that direction. It's either there or it's not. And again, like I said, common sense is you can't possibly have conviction and talk with any level 
with, with any level of seriousness, did anyone even take you seriously to say, oh, this is a really good short. Oh, this is a really good long today. No one would even take you seriously. No one would even take you seriously at all. But trading is about making money. And you really want to make money in the market. This is the reason you do it. It's fun to press the buttons, I know. But really, I just want to do one trade a day. I mean, the faster I'm in and the faster I'm out, the happier I am. It's just about that for me. I really just do it because I love reading charts, but I really love making money as fast as possible and being done. And the quicker you're in the trades and the out, then you're, then you're less at risk as well. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. And the course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. The course teaches a more proficient way to read support and resistance in the right direction so you know how to use that to help you train. Because you cannot just go in and buy support on anything, it won't work right. Or short resistance, like with the JCPenney. The course teaches you to focus on one strategy, which is the Golden Gaps, in a detailed manner so you can become a good trader. Because ultimately, if you're a good trader and you're making money, then you, then the sky's the limit for you. I mean, you can make more than $1,000 a day and, you know, thousands of dollars a day. So my class has a rating system. It's called the Golden Gap 26-point rating system. And you've really got to have an edge if you want to make money in the market. And I think $1,000 a day is fantastic. I call them common days. I'm risking this much in my trade, so some of my days have much bigger numbers, but I'm trading for a while. But I want you to know that, you know, it's something that you can learn and do it. And you can have a goal set for yourself. Like, in six months, I want to make this much. Or in 12 months, I want to make this much. Or whatever the case may be. I mean, you could start at risking $500 and in three months start risking 1000 But making money involves a plan of action. You've got to know specifically what you're trading and why. It has to do with the control. And, and this was really a theme for myself for this month, for balance. I, and I'm going to pull this theme through my teachings this whole month and every lecture I do. Personally and professionally, I'm looking to be in a very balanced state this month in March. And I'm, you know, talking about this a lot in the live room. And I'm going to talk about it a lot in the webinars. When you're in a state of balance, you will make very good financial decisions. When you are not in a state of balance, you will make crazy financial decisions that you, that you, question yourself and then you go back and say, why did I do that crazy trade? Or why did I take JCPenney overnight? Or why did I do this? Or why did I do that? It's about balance. And when you're in balance with yourself, you will make good financial decisions. And know that success is contagious. I've got a good group of people training with me now. I'm doing well, they're doing well. It kind of is contagious where it just, it, you know, it goes back and forth. It goes both ways. You've got to get to a point where you are working with a mentor, which might be like me, uh, if, if you understand what I'm saying, if it resonates with you, if you want to learn from me, you've got to work with someone that you understand or someone that you mesh with or someone that you can say, yeah, that makes sense. And I think that my strategy makes a lot of common sense because I could go and talk to people that are professionals in the industry that, that, that obviously don't know my 26-point rating system and they would have no idea what that is if I go talk to them, but they would, they would understand that I bought JCPenney because they probably bought it too. And so do you see the difference? So you have, to, you have to think like someone that is in the industry, running big money. You want to be with that big money. It's very easy to make money if you are. It is very easy to lose money if you are not with the right side of a stock. And you will never win against that money in the end. And this is why people have to get that in their head. And traders can't be looking to do setups and things that don't make any sense. So empower yourself to trade the market. I'm doing a special. I was running a special with the people that are in my on my list, on my marketing list, through through today. I'm going to extend it till tomorrow for the people that came here tonight. If you are interested in taking my class, if you really want to do it, the class is this weekend, Saturday and Monday. It's going to be Saturday and Monday. I'm offering a leap day special. I'm going to run it through tomorrow. So you can sign up tonight or tomorrow, but it expires tomorrow at midnight. I'm going to give people through March 1st, since today is Leap Day, and happy, happy Leap Day, everyone. Uh, you can sign up for my Golden Gap class. This weekend is the bearish one. The bearish or the bullish class, you can sign up, and you can get the rest of 2016 in the room for free. This is a savings of $3,000. You can be in the room then, take the class, and get my calls and take my trades every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, for the rest of the year for free. And I normally charge $250 a month to be in the room after the class. This is a huge, huge savings. And it's a great deal to help you make the money back for the class as fast as you can and to make money going forward. 
And I think, again, this is idea of getting the conviction and seeing the profits, whatever the amount is, whatever amount of money you make, if it's $50 today or $100 today or whatever it is, you get conviction when you're green, when your account is going up. You don't get conviction when your account is going down. And then you make crazy mistakes because you're out of balance. One of the rocks fell off, you know? You have to be in balance. Anyways, this special expires at midnight tomorrow, March 1st. And email me if you want to sign up. The sign-up papers for the class are not on my website. Email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to register and sign up. So the class is this weekend. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The bearish class is this weekend. Retakes are free. The class is online, just like this. You can be anywhere in the world to take it. The date's is Saturday, March 5th, and Monday, March 7th. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $39.99. And you would get the room free to the end of the year if you sign up by tomorrow. No exceptions. None. Okay? Now, if you want to do the bullish class, you can still sign up for this and get the year to the end of the year free. You'd have to sign up by tomorrow. This class is not until April, but this teaches you how to play bullish gaps. So if you'd like to go long, you can learn this too. This class is during the week, April 5th, 6th, and 7th, noon to 5. Finally got dates on this. Some people have been asking me for the dates. I'm going to get a schedule of class dates going out for the next two months. I promise. I'm on a schedule now, people. $39.99 for the bullish class. You would get the room free to the rest of the year if you sign up for this by tomorrow, even though the class is until April. You have to register ahead of time. And I also teach a class called the Trends class. This I'm doing March 9th and 10th. That's next week, actually. Yeah. Next week, I'm doing this class, noon to 3. Cost of $9.99. Now... This teaches you how to do overnights and look and read trends and the long-term trends in stocks. If you want to sign up for the bullish gap class and the trends or the bearish gap class and the trends, you get half off the trends class. You will save 500 bucks and you can pay $44.99. And if you sign up by tomorrow, you get the room free to the end of the year. This is a great deal. This is a great deal with the trends class, one of the gap classes and the room free to the end of the year. It saves you basically $3,500. And if you want to do both, Gap classes. I've had some people ask me about this. The bearish class is this weekend, the 5th and the 7th of March, Saturday and Monday. Live trading on the Monday. Live gap analysis on Monday the 7th. The bullish class is in April. If you want to do both, you can do both. You will save. I'm giving a percentage off. If you save and want to sign up for both, learn both the systems, you get the room free to the end of the year. You get a discount on both of the classes, and it's a savings of almost five grand. Then you learn how to go long and short, and you have the room free to the end of the year. I've had people inquire about this. There it is. This saves you just doing the two classes. This one thousand nine hundred ninety-nine bucks, and then with the room free, if you sign up by March first, it's almost five grand savings. I mean, this is a great deal, and you'll know it all. Now, if you want a trial to the room. You can email me at info at stockswish.com. I do give trials. I will give you a trial for the rest of the week if you want to watch what I do. You can trial me tomorrow and see if you like what I do and sign up for the special in the, in the, in the room tomorrow. But this special expires March 1st, but you can be in the room all week if you're not sure. Be in the room, watch me trade Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay? But, you know, you got to get to a point, I think, where you decide, I really want to do this. The thing that I'm doing isn't working. Or maybe you're not trading at all and you're like, I have no idea where to start. I'm a great place to start. I found a lot of success with people that know very little about the market because they don't have any negative habits. They have, they have no negative habits and opinions. Now, let me just look at some questions here. Jean, no, it's not exactly the same. Jean is saying, what's the difference between the bullish and the bearish? No, there are some things that are different. There are. There are. I'll tell you a funny story. Whenever I, I like to short, I told you that. But whenever I call long in the room, it's almost like everyone does it because I rarely, rarely go long because I prefer to short. But if I call long, it's really, really good. Like the ACAM long from the, from the other week that was a couple weeks ago. So it's not exactly the same. Just like everything else. If, if there's just one thing or two things that are different, Jean, it, it's the difference between making money or losing. It's like there's that one thing. It's the difference between making money or losing. I'm serious. I mean, that's really literally how important it is to have a focus in trading. So they're not exactly the same. JB is asking about Saturday course. Do I do one another days? I am going to do a second class in March, Jeb is asking, on Sunday and Monday. So you can sign up for the special by tomorrow. 
and do the class this weekend, Saturday and Monday, or you can do the second class in March, which is going to be Sunday and Monday. And then the class for April will be Saturday and Sunday. Does that answer your question, Jeb? Here is the exact dates. For the bearish class, it is March 5th and 7th, and March 20th and 21st. April is Saturday and Sunday. I don't have a calendar in front of me. I, I, did, I do actually have these dates. I mean, I, I absolutely have to get a schedule. I have a lot of things going on. I'm getting it all together, people, for a schedule. And it's it's going to be out there, and it's going to be something that you're going to see ahead of time. And know then if you want to do the retakes. I, I've The business has grown a lot, and I've been doing everything myself. That, that, that's a show. The fact that I have done everything in my business myself. I have a part-time employee, that's it, who works a few hours a week. The fact that I do everything myself, I trade myself, I do the webinars, I teach the classes, I write the webinars, I trade myself, I run the room. The fact that I have a successful business now for over three years doing everything myself is amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing. But you know what the reality is? I love what I do, but now it has gotten to the point that I'm growing and I'm looking to hire someone. We'll see if it works out right now or if not in the future. But it's, it's going to happen, and then th that will be even better for all the people that are here because, I, I like I said, I want to have a more interactive experience. I need help to make all those things happen, and, and it's going to come together. But, you know, I take what I do very seriously, so for someone to come work with me, then they're gonna, they have to be good. They have to be good, and, you know, if it was easy to find people that were amazing traders, uh, then, you know, I would have hired someone a long time ago. So it's, it's, it's one of these things that you just have to wait for the timing is right. Uh, GEB wants the price for the, the price for all the classes are the same. It's $39.99 for the GAT classes, whether you do bullish or bearish. It's $39.99 for the bullish and $39.99 for the bearish. The trends class does not teach you specifically how to take entries or make money. That $9.99 class is an add-on to become more advanced and a better day trader and long-term swing trader. You learn the entries and which stock to pick in the gap class. Whether you do the bullish one or bearish one depends on whether or not you want to go long or short. And if you want to do both, I'm giving a steep discount to do both, and then you get the room free to the end of the year. There was something else I was going to say, and I just forget what. I don't remember. Does anyone have any questions about anything else? Anything at all, anything about gaps or, you know, anything about this, the leap year special, anything about the trading room. I don't think there's any specific watches I had for tonight. Nothing tonight that really made me jump up and down. I'm sure we'll get something tomorrow. There's a bunch of earnings out tomorrow morning, then things will gap for other reasons besides earnings. It still is earnings season and spring is a good time to trade. March and April are good times to trade when the market is busy. And, and it's like a spring day out. Speaking of spring right now, it's almost like spring out tonight. Does anyone have any questions about anything else? If you would like more information, you can call me. The phone number on the first slide was wrong. See, this is why I need to hire someone. <laughs> it's 929-3200-427. Okay? Now, you can email me too. I'll put that in the room as well. Right there. But don't be afraid if you have been stuck in a rut to change what you're doing, whether it's your career or whether it's your trading pattern or whether it's the type of strategy you're doing now that isn't working or whether you're doing futures or Forex or something else and it's just not working out and you're losing. Don't be afraid to try something new. Gaps, are, there's a lot of people out there that talk about gaps and a lot of them don't trade them well. I'm the only person that really does this really well and probably could have a conversation, like I said to you, with like a hedge fund manager. And, and talk intelligently about, about what I would be doing in a stock. This idea of doing some of these gap strategies doesn't make any intelligent sense. So you gotta think about that. I mean, whatever amount of money you're risking, whether it's $300 or $500, you better be thoughtful about what you risk. And it's, 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 it's not even about getting a perspective. I mean, I'm risking $1,000 and more in some of my trades, but if I don't like something, I not only will I not risk a thousand, I won't even risk the cost of this highlighter. I won't even risk the cost of this pen. I won't even risk a dollar. Do you understand? I mean, this is what I'm talking about, about conviction. It's 
you you have to believe in it and that's why the idea of actually going short and going long at the same time makes no sense you can't have conviction in both directions and i'm not spending a dollar if i'm not willing to spend a thousand so you either have the conviction or you don't and, and you got to learn what the difference is which place is mine on the skyline the tallest building that you can see <laughs> that's mine and i'm not kidding you all right. Yeah, I know. Someone was asking about the website. The pictures of my website are, are in my building. They're my building. Fabulous. Why do you think I'm doing all these things? I, why do you think I love to trade? I'm like, you know what? I'm doing it. It's You have to have goals for yourself. You have to have goals for yourself, okay? I'm training the market because I love it and because of the income potential. I mean, I'm risking $1,000 a trade right now. I'm not going to be risking that forever. Eventually, I'm going to risk more. And I started doing options in the last few months. I had some huge trades in January. You know, I want to get to the point where I can buy an apartment that's even bigger and huger and taller than this. You all have to have goals. Wherever you are in your life, get a plan of action, set your goals in place, figure it out, okay? It doesn't mean that you can't get there. You have to start from something, all right? If, you, if, you're, if you're doing something that's losing, then you're, you're not getting anywhere. You're not getting anywhere at all, okay? You have to... You have to do something that is making you money, at least to even see that you can get there. All right. All right, have a good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. It was good to see you, for you to see me. I will see everybody at the next HotCon or the next webinar. Email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want more information. And think about the things I said tonight. I hope you learned something good about this idea of control and about being intellectual about your thought processes with your traits. Have a great night, everyone, and email me at melissathestockswitch.com if you want to sign up for the Leap Year Special, which expires tomorrow at midnight. Great deal to get the room free to the end of the year. All right. Thanks, everyone.